Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. In today's video we're going to be taking a double look at the Transformers Legacy Store Exclusive Deluxe Class Buzzsaw and Deluxe Class Night Prowler. Now the reasoning behind why I've decided to take a look at both of these guys in today's review is because for the most part, especially where Night Prowler is concerned, these guys are just essentially repaints of either the Waspinator mold and of course the Cheetor mold and I thought it wouldn't really make sense to of course drag these reviews out when I could essentially just give you guys my concise thoughts in one accumulative video. Now we'll start off Firstly, by taking a look at probably the least interesting out of the two, that being Deluxe Class Night Prowler. Many of us knew this figure was coming. It was just really a matter of time as to when, and I was actually quite surprised that he's been packaged in Legacy. I personally would have expected to have seen him maybe in the Generation Selects line, or at least towards the tail end of Kingdom, but you can see that in regards to a mold, it is identical to Cheetor. But I've got to be honest and say, I do think as far as repaints go, it's probably one of the more interesting ones. You can see there for the head sculpt, really nice yellow paint. Of course, we've got those piercing green lime eyes, and something of which actually surprised me was that we don't in fact actually get a maximal insignia it is the autobot insignia which i believe is in fact faithful to the original prototype from back in the day you can see in regards to this almost polka dot design we've got going on for the cheetah head i think it once again looks fantastic if you're not a fan of the mold then you're still not going to be a huge fan here of night prowler but i've always loved the attention to detail especially with the discs inside these shoulder sections that's a really nice touch and then as we just spin our attention here down to the lower section sadly pretty barren in regards to paint apps it merely is just these black spots that we've got scattered throughout the legs there's no detailing or paint going on here for the actual shins but you can see not a bad looking figure by any stretch of the imagination i really do think this would have been the perfect opportunity to have given us a gut gun sadly he still only has the tail whip which doesn't look too bad you can see how we've got this almost spear like design here at the tip which i think looks pretty awesome i won't bore you guys in regards to articulation but that gunmetal silver going on for the mouthpiece actually looks really nicely done now in regards to transformation very very simplistic so to begin with you are of course just going to want to hinge these panels here out to the side we can then take the cheetah head disengage this from the body sadly it still suffers from the same issue as shadow panther as well as of course the original cheetor that being that this tab is most certainly prone to breaking it's definitely not something that is required for transformation but still it's definitely not a great design and i do wish that maybe hasbro could have addressed this but just take the head rotate this so the front is facing the back cap this section here over the top collapse the jaw and then here for the torso we just rotate the wrist around like so come to this side and of course repeat the same process just combine these two halves just like this take these sections collapse them there over the top straighten out the paws we can then take the feet fold these sections here to the back pinch that just like so flip to this side and you guys guessed it repeat the exact same process and for a finishing touch we do just take the tail port that in and then we've got the all new night prowler fully transformed up into the cheetah alt mode not looking too bad at all definitely a really cool looking beast mode i believe this is the fourth time that we are in fact actually seeing this mode but as mentioned previously i think as far as repaints go it's not looking too bad at all i absolutely love these almost black dots that we've got scattered throughout this guy they've all been applied really nice and precisely you can see literally they've covered almost every single aspect of this figure which is awesome to see unlike robot mode of which actually had a fair amount of bland parts but you can see here for the face sculpt i think that looks awesome of course you can still drop down the jaw to reveal the tongue and teeth it would have been nice if they could have painted this but considering the scale i can completely understand as to why maybe they didn't want to and i do like how some areas are in fact a darker shade of plastic just to give you that almost realistic tone that you would expect from a real life cheetah and as we just spin our attention here down to the lower section you can once again see that darker tone used here for the actual shin region as well as the toes so overall not a bad looking figure at all now i will of course bring out some comparisons towards the later half of this review but let's bring in the legacy buzz source certainly one of the best repaints i think we've seen so far for legacy this guy is actually really really nicely done and i'm a huge fan of the head sculpt they've given him you can see there we've got this almost jeepers creepers vibe going on with these massive wings protruding out to the side definitely does resemble an almost bat and you can see the sculpt work is actually fairly impressive i love all the texture that we've got going on there towards the side the face actually isn't too bad looking either and we do indeed actually see light piping much like the original waspinator and even as we take a look here towards the back you can see how that has not only been fully painted but has 
to being completely sculpted. The rest of the figure is identical to Waspinator. I've always been a huge fan of the Kingdom Waspinator design, despite it perhaps not being as good as a Thrilling 30 release. I still think for a contemporary Waspinator, it wasn't too bad. And considering this guy shares the exact same molding, he's actually turned out pretty nicely. You can see we've got really nice paint going on here for the chest region. Of course, you'll see this more when we get him transformed up into the actual Wasp, but the wings look awesome. They've been cast out of transparent plastic and have been given an almost black fade over the top just to really make them look realistic. I think that's turned out super, super nicely as we just spin our attention here to the arms. You can see some lime green, purple, metallic black, as well as some yellow, and of course, purple there for the hands. Really nice color contrast across the board. And then as we just take a look here towards the legs, I love the fading detailing that we've got going on here for the shins, once again, using that metallic or glossy black. And the same can also be said here for the thighs. And you can see how they've used purple for the heel spurs, which once again, I really think helps to break up the color palette towards here to the bottom. And then as we just take a look at the back, of course, you've got the abdominal section of the actual wasp, exactly the same as Waspinator. So it's got the same black stripes as well as yellow plastic. And he sadly still comes with that pretty puny blaster that we saw with Waspinator. Definitely not the best, but I guess it's good in some regards that they did give this guy an accessory at all. And you can see we do get the Predacon insignia slap bang there onto the shoulder. So in regards to the transformation for this figure, a little more complex when in comparison to our Cheetor or of course Night Prowler. I believe this is the second time we're seeing this mold. Whether or not we'll get a third repaint is yet to be seen, but you just want to disengage this region here. Of course, this tiny slot will be fulfilled by this tab. So just snap that section in there. We can then disengage this region, rotate just like so. And then in regards to the arms, you're just going to want to fold those in. I believe here for the hands, these are supposed to fold like this. And then we just bend accordingly until this section does snap there into place. Of course, come to this side and repeat the same process. So rotate the wrist so that the palm is facing upwards. Snap that section there into place. And then here with the abdominal region, you are going to want to collapse the heel spurs in, fold the feet forwards, and then just shoot these sections here to the front. And then this will in fact actually lock into place. You can hear there it will snap. And then in regards to these, you just basically want to tab these in just like so. And then just snap these two components here together. And then just rotate the wasp legs down, rotate these ones down, fold the wings here out to the back. And then you've got Buzzsaw fully transformed up into his pretty awesome looking wasp mode. Honestly, I actually think this has turned out just as good as the robot mode. The color palette is really awesome, especially where that head sculpt is concerned. You can see how we've got some fantastic texture detailing going on there for the eyes. You can see some really, really nice sculpt detailing as well as green transparent plastic. I believe these are in fact compound eyes. And you can see how you've got the little antennas here at the top, which also have been sculpted really nicely. Those really menacing mandibles and the same skin texture detail that we saw here for the wings previously really nice skull work going on here for this torso region and of course the insect legs look just as gross as they did on the original waspinator and here for a very quick beast mode comparison we've got buzzsaw compared next to waspinator and night prowler compared next to cheetor now mold wise especially here for buzzsaw in beast form they are exactly the same it truly is just the colors of which differ so bringing cheetor and night prowler in here for a closer look just so you can see the differences from a front on and a side and of course top perspective exactly the same it's just the colors of which differ and the same can also be said here for buzzsaw and waspinator so you can see really really nice looking repaint going on with this figure i think out of all of the legacy repaints we've seen so far this is definitely by far the best one we've seen yet and here for a super duper robot mode comparison, we've of course got both Buzzsaw and Night Prowler compared next to their respected mold mates, that being Waspinator and Cheetor. And besides the difference in regards to head sculpt for Buzzsaw, all of these guys are exactly the same as one another. It truly is just the colors of which are of course the major difference. And so some final thoughts for the Transformers Legacy, Deluxe Class, Buzzsaw and Night Prowler. Overall, these guys for the most part are essentially just repaints. So it is truly gonna come down to personal preference as to whether or not you guys find these worthy of adding to the collection. If you're a fan of perhaps that cancelled prototype that was shown way back in the day of Night Prowler, then maybe you're going to want to pick this figure up for nostalgia reasons or just because of course it is based on a prototype. Personally, if I had to choose out of the two, I would definitely go with Buzzsaw. I think he looks awesome in regards to a repaint. Really, really nicely done. And of course, in terms of robot mode, he does in fact actually have a brand new head sculpt of which has been detailed quite damn nicely. So definitely I would stick with Buzzsaw. Night Prowler, personally, I'm not entirely sure whether or not it's due to me being pretty burnt out 
with the Cheetle mold, but when I actually saw this guy announced, I was like, oh god, another version of that figure. So for me, it's definitely not a must-have by any stretch of the imagination, but the Waspinator mold, I've always found to be pretty decent, and as mentioned previously, this buzzsaw certainly is a really cool Predacon repaint. I really hope that you guys enjoyed this double review. Please feel free to let me know down in the comment section below on what you think of both the review as well as the figures. Will you be adding any of these to your collection, or will you in fact be missing out? I thank you all so much for watching, and until my next review, I'll see you then. Thanks for watching.